So I have an idea for a painting. I did the thumbnails and doodled some compositions that I liked, but what's next? In this video, I'll be showing you how I start the foundations of a painting and plan the colors for the actual piece. Um, this can apply to both my traditional and digital painting methods, but in this case, I plan on painting on canvas, so I really wanna make sure I understand my dimensions and the ratio at which I will be working at. So final painting is going to be 24 by 36 or about two feet by three feet. So I set my digital file up to be 12 inch by 18 inches to match the proportion of the canvas, but also keep the file at a reasonable size. I always like to half it or quarter it, um, depending on how, how much detail I want to put into the draft of the painting. And then I get to work on transferring the digital sketch into a digital drawing, laying the foundation and na nailing down the key elements and where I want to place them in the piece. A large portion of my planning process is spent really taking the time to render out a drawing and make sure I'm content with the way it looks since it is the building blocks of the painting. For this specific painting, I really want to capture both of the characters' symbolism, personalities, and weapon of choice to frame the double portrait I'm creating. If this is the first video of my channel you're watching, uh, these are my original cowboy characters, Star Ray Saul and Blue Ray Bill. Um, they're fruit-themed cowboys set in more of like a D&D fantasy setting with mythical creatures, and both of them work as monster slayers with their respective tools. Saul, the figure to the left, uses a sword, while Bill to the right uses a crossbow. Their main enemy tends to be vampires, but they usually help out local communities and villages and kingdoms with various pests and magical creatures. And now that I'm thinking about it, by the time of me doing this voiceover, I think it'd be cool to add more hints about their vampiric nemesis, maybe including some garlic, fruit bats hidden in the plants, um, maybe a crucifix. I have no idea how religion is going to play out in this universe, so I'm a bit iffy about that, but the garlic and bats seems pretty cool. But anyways, I also included their respective horses, Shortcake and Buckle, in the painting, um, being that they play a large role in the story as well, along with the actual human heart at the top, intertwining it with strawberry and blueberry branches, hinting at a possible romance. Uh, yeah, if you didn't realize already, Bill and Saul are boyfriends basically, but not necessarily right at the start of their story. They actually start out more like enemies to lovers type deal with Saul's constant teasing and goofing around, annoying Bill, along with some other plot things that initially made Bill resent working with Saul. But yeah, anyways, this painting really shows hints about their world and who they are in it and their relationship to one another. And I won't divulge any more into their backstory until I make like a whole dedicated video for each of them and have every and have more of their story solidify. I guess you're gonna have to subscribe and maybe follow me to figure out more about their story in the future. Also, I wanted to mention real quick that as I'm drawing and painting this, it's good to flip your canvas horizontally because I forgot to switch and like mirror the canvas to make sure I wasn't missing any mistakes. And I realized I didn't really like how Bill's face was and how his hat was turning out. So make sure you're continuously going to like the, I think it's the adjustments or something like that or transformation tools and flipping your canvas. It really helps in catching some like easy mistakes you could fix in like two seconds. Anyways, um, as I'm drawing and planning things out, uh, I really wanted to nail how the plants were going to look and I pretty much saved them for last because I wasn't really looking forward to rendering those out because it was just, it was gonna be complicated and they were gonna be like intertwining and I was gonna have to use a lot of reference photos and I just didn't wanna do it. But I just sat down and I did it and I was referring back to the previous studies I've done in other videos in my sketchbook and looking back at my Pinterest board and really nailing down how I wanted those areas of the paintings to look so I wouldn't be free balling in the actual painting process. But yeah, so I had that all sketched out for the thumbnail. Everything is situated just with the lines and the sketch and everything is placed how I want it to be. And this is just a basis. I may end up removing things or changing things in the actual painting or transferring to the canvas when I'm like moving, actually drawing on the canvas and painting on the canvas, but it's just a good basis and to keep things correct and just a strong structure to build upon. Onto coloring. For particularly large pieces like this and 
especially traditional ones, I really like to figure out what the general like family and color palette I'll be using will look like so I don't have to waste a bunch of paint on repainting colors and figuring out the palette through trial and error and relying on luck to just get me through a painting. Um, so I initially like to think of what the atmosphere of the painting will be and what kind of mood that I want the painting to be. For this specific painting, I was imagining like a sunset sky, really warm, magical, almost romantic mood hitting at the the fantasy element of the story and kind of like the the rich colors and fantastical element and this helps me figure out a color for an underpainting as well i don't do anything that fancy for an underpainting like figuring out values and putting a lot of work into it it's usually just a general wash of a solid color so for this instance i'll think i'll be leaning towards either a magenta or like a reddish orange to match to really bring a warmth to the painting and match that mood of like that romantic warm fantastical feeling it's really fun to experiment with what type of color color the underpainting can be and how that can affect the, how the painting will look. Like you could have a really green painting but if you did like a red underpainting it could really like electrify the green that's in the painting if you let some of that red show through and vice versa using complementary colors or analogous colors and just trying to figure out how that can affect the mood and the temperature of the painting. So while I'm doing like digital color thumbnails I find it really simple to just lay down the local colors. Local colors as in like true colors of an object like how they would look in naturally or neutrally lit areas um, so like I have a plant that's on my desk the the local color of that plant is like green basically so I would like paint each aspect of the painting in their like basic color and then in a post like correction tools I'll use in clip studio paint to change and adjust them as I go um, so lighting and colors go hand in hand so I like to keep everything on the same doing like the basic colors and then building on top of them and adjusting them so I think for this one I do like three different variations and attempts to get colors I want and I always find that doing multiple studies and thumbnails helps to explore and really find the palette that works the best for the idea that you have. However, one of the biggest things I know about painting and art in general or visual art in general is that values and contrast are what make and break for a painting reading clearly to our human eyes. Yes, editing and post can help but if you don't have like a clear value distinction or textural differences, contrast through mark or mainly we're gonna be like talking I'm, I'm going to be speaking about like value. Um, if you don't have the those like value differences between your colors your painting might not be as clear so after laying down your basic colors change the canvas to black and white and see if there are clear darker and clear lighter areas and that everything isn't like the same gray and uh, that you're losing details or losing forms because they're the the values next to each other are too close or the the colors that are next to each other are too close in value and they could get end up getting lost and not read as clear Really as a painting. Thinking in colors as value as you work can prevent things from becoming too similar in value and end up getting lost in your painting and I think I've referenced um, Bill Perkins composition class from New Masters Academy before but I found that really helpful in I found that class particularly helpful with this idea of thinking of colors as value and having like a clear design and a clear value ranges in your painting for to make for more successful compositions and paintings so I really recommend that class if you're able to take it or able to find something similar to his composition class. Furthermore, as uh, once I lay down the local colors, I then take the gradient map tool and since my values are clear and I'm happy with them, I think Bill and Saul ended up being like darkest value and the foreground and background differ enough from each other. I think I may end up making like the, the leaves and the branch darker so that they stand out from the background. Usually when something's darker, it appears like it's closer to you, like physically, like depth wise. So having objects that are more in the foreground become darker are really helpful in achieving that depth as well. Yeah, Gritty Map Tools is great for like adjusting colors in relation to each other. So it, it usually changes the hues and like temperatures of the colors. So I'm able to create a gradient map where my darkest values have a more purpley reddish hue and my lighter colors have more of a, like a yellow hue to match the atmosphere of like a 
golden hour, sunset moment, you know. I love using gradient maps to help unify colors or alter the look of a painting instantly. You can make gradients of blues and greens for like a night scene or gradient map of yellows for like a morning scene. It's super versatile and helpful with figuring out like color palettes. Ever since learning how to use gradient maps, I always, I use it pretty much constantly as I'm trying to figure out colors or unify colors in a piece. Also having a basic understanding of color theory can also really help in using this tool and just coloring, figuring out colors for a piece in general. So I really recommend like either looking up like color theory videos and just having like a general basis of how things work can really um, help. So once I set up a gradient map that I like, I apply it to the color thumbnail and then I do like a little painting on top to make certain colors more defined and get it to a place that I like. I can't really give any advice to this step since it's a lot of knowledge of painting and just working with color to where it just becomes second nature to like change and adjust things and add things. But most of all, my best advice is to keep on checking your values set so that things are staying clear in your painting. Okay. Okay, moving on to the next step, transferring the digital drawing or the digital mock-up to an actual canvas or whatever surface that you're working on. Uh, this is probably the simplest part of the whole preparation process for me. Um, make sure whatever surface you're working on is primed or ready to be used. Um, for canvas paintings, I usually do like two to three coats of gesso to, to prime the canvas. Even on top of like pre-gessoed canvas, canvases from an art store, I still like to get like a couple more coats in to keep it, to make it a really nice surface to paint on. and sanding between layers to keep things smooth. This just allows for an easier surface to work on with paint. It's smoother and paint applies more evenly. Moving on, I start to prep my digital reference for transferring the drawing to canvas. I basically make a grid version of my drawing and make a matching grid on the canvas and then follow my digital reference and just match the drawing. It keeps proportions intact and I don't have to worry about the drawing changing too much during the conversion to canvas. You can also use a projector or transfer paper, but but since it's such a large canvas and I don't have a projector, <laughs> we're just gonna grid it out. And this is what I did for my strawberry salt painting from last year. I just grid it out and had a whole plan in Procreate and then put a grid on top of my Procreate drawing and just use that as a reference. So first I put a grid over my Clip Studio Paint canvas. You can also do this in Procreate and Photoshop. So. For Clip Studio Paint specifically, you go to the View tab and then you hit Grid. You can also um, change the grid orientation by hitting Grid Ruler Bar Settings and change the number of divisions. And this is important in how you want to create the grid on your canvas. I initially put it as two divisions to match the exact dimensions of my canvas. So it would create a 24 by 36 grid on the digital canvas, therefore matching the dimensions of my traditional canvas. But I ended up putting it down to a division of one so I had a 12 by 18 grid for my digital canvas. And then therefore, as I made a grid on my traditional canvas, it would have been squares of going by two inches. So it'd be 12 by 18 squares, but it would actually, it would still be 24 by 36 inches, but I'd just be like simplifying it to go by two inches instead of one inches. I hope this makes sense. It's hard for me to explain, but I'm gonna be including footage of me like measuring it out. So I take my ruler and I'm going by two inches instead of one inches, so my square squares are larger and I can draw more loosely and not have to have as many lines uh, from the grid. And then be aware that the divisions really depend on how closely your digital canvas dimensions match your physical one. So my digital canvas was 12 by 18, so it was about half the size of my traditional one. So doing a division of two, so the 12 by 18 digital canvas, doing a division of two makes it have a 24 by 36 square footage and that would match the square footage of the canvas. I don't know, I'm hoping that makes sense. I hope I'm not like making it too difficult. You guys can figure it out. You guys are smart, um, probably smarter than me. So there's probably an easier way to do this too. So let me know down below what you do. But um, yeah, moving on, I'll create the grid on the actual canvas with a charcoal pencil, typically a medium or a hard pencil or a soft pencil, whatever I can find. Um, I think I usually use the General's uh, brand and then your hands get all messy and it's a whole mess. But uh, this is what takes the longest, but it's really worth it in maintaining the proportions and placements of the objects in the painting. I constantly check back to my digital reference as I'm drawing, making sure the squares are matching up. It also helps to print off the gridded drawing, but using a phone or 
tablet to reference can be just as helpful. I also feel like with all this grid talk, I also feel like there should be like a gritty joke somewhere in this, but I'm not funny enough for that. But anyways, now I just, when I finished the drawing, I, um, I take some matte medium and cover the drawing entirely to seal it and keep it from interfering with the color of the paint. Um, I just follow the lines that I drew and make sure every bit of charcoal is covered by the medium. You can find matte medium at an art store typically um, in like the painting section and matte medium can also be used to mix in with acrylic paint to help thin it out or um, keep it from drying as fast and I really um, I use it a lot in, in doing washes and like thinning the paint. So the initial drawing gets a little smudge from doing that but it doesn't bother me too much since I still have my digital drawing reference to look back to and a lot of the drawing is going to be lost through painting anyways but yeah now I just wait for the medium to dry and then we can actually start painting. Wow it's been such a long journey getting to this point but yeah. So that's it. That's how I prep a canvas and figure out my colors for a painting. It's a bit of work, but it really helps in having an easier painting process. Or that's what I tell myself so that I can really focus on just painting and not have to worry about proportions or what color something is going to be. Of course, I may add or change things in painting in the painting as I'm actually working on it, like adding um, those bats that I was talking about. But I really like to have a solid foundation to work on top of, especially when working with finite supplies with at such like a larger size. I don't want to waste a ton of paint. Ooh trial and error and figuring things out as I go. Art supplies cost a lot of money so I really want to make sure I like have a plan and I'm not wasting a ton of paint. Thank you guys for watching. I hope seeing my painting preparation process has gave you some ideas and techniques in your own work and let me know down below if you have any tips or would like to share your process and just or have general comments. I would love to learn more from you guys and yeah make sure to like and subscribe to see me finish this painting. Um, who knows by the time you're watching this video I already did and I hope it went well. Depending on how long this painting takes to complete, I may split the process into parts in your time with some warm-up paintings or some more like sketchbook stuff. Um, but yeah, if you're interested in more frequent posting from me, you can check out my Instagram. And if you'd like to purchase anything Barry Cowboy related, you can um, check out my Ko-Fi shop as well. Um, I mainly have stickers, but I'm working on possibly prints for the month of July and August, so stay tuned. You can also subscribe to my email newsletter for discounts and updates regarding shop stuff. And yeah, thank you guys so much for watching. Uh, go drink some water and have a nice day. All right, see you guys. Bye.